Hi, and welcome to the Jess and Scott Show. Tonight we are talking about unleashing your creative power. And true to form, I do have little things to hold up to the screen because as, as awesome as everybody likes pictures in the, in the stream, and Scott does a really good job of posting links and all that other good stuff, I like to bring mine as show and tell. So the first one today says, if, if it will focus, I don't know, it might not focus, it says, love your soul. And the second one says, you are unlimited. And what I would add to that is that creativity comes from somewhere, and it does come from in here. And your sense of humor and what makes you laugh and get excited about the world also comes from right in here. And we learn from the people around us what works and what doesn't so we can really bring our true self to the floor and have a good time, sometimes tricking people, sometimes not, sometimes just going with the flow and enjoying the conversation. And with that, I want to say, let's go to our open. Okay, here we go, Jess. with Scott and I'm Jess and Scott how about if you take a minute to introduce yourself since this is our first show ever we're all really big fans of Google Plus and that's why we're here he was teasing me about it raining and I called him on it <laughs> well it was supposed to be raining and I like I like the idea How do you sort that out, Jess? I, I think we need to come back just a little bit. <laughs> I'm following your lead today. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. We're both in trouble then. <laughs> Okay, that was the best open ever, I have to admit. Well, thanks. It's all yeah. yours now, Jess. It's, I don't even know how to follow that. Oh, wait, yes, I do. Check out who's here. So, um, Bill Bassman, he might stop by. He said, sounds like a fun concept, so we're excited about that. And I actually pulled out Sheila's comment, too, about Lerpa Loof, if I say it correctly. How funny is that? Um, what a great conversation on the event page pre-show. And then Leslie O'Neill says, hey, you're a fantastic show. And then Devin wanted to know, how do I earn an invite? And Bill Bassman actually invited him to the show, so that was super cool. We appreciate that happening. Devin, we hope you stop by tonight or first thing in the morning when you have some time to join us. And Johnny is in the house. Welcome. And so is Nora. Okay, so anybody else who is here, we want to see you and say hello because this is a show that we would love to have you come be on camera with us tonight. Tell us a joke. Give us an idea of what's going on in your world, whatever the case may be. And... Um, We'll go from there. So if you're interested, we're watching the event page banter, and you will know when we reach out to you privately to join you into the film strip that you have been chosen. So Scott's going to take care of that, all the linking and all of that good stuff behind the scenes while we're having the conversation. So it's going to be interesting to see if Scott can press buttons and invite you and keep... <laughs> conversation with me. What do you think about that, Scott? I think you know me too well. You, you, <laughs> you said that with a, 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 
a modicum of uh, amazement in your voice that you know Scott volunteered to do that what he must be out of his mind he he hates doing two things at one time but oh, I but promise look, we are so in the right place though because look monogamous uh, the love coach is in the house there she We're is excited you're here mm -hmm. thanks for That's coming and, so we and, should talk so, for a minute about where those clips came from <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Had I moved yet at that point, or was yes, I still you, in the closet? Literally. Oh, 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 oh. okay, moved. Um, uh huh. No, I, think, I think you'd moved. I think, yeah, yeah. Okay. Was, cause because I couldn't tell from well, the color of that wall if it was a sheet that I had covering the clothes in my closet, or if it was um, actually just an unpainted wall in my office. Okay, because it, it looked like a, a, a black slate or something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, that that you had. So I think you've moved into your current space. Um, okay. But um, yeah. So uh, we we decided to do what? Well, we we were just going to continue to do them until we started to get comfortable with Hangouts on Air, and and that got a little ridiculous because I don't think that we we're. So we I think eventually said we're just going to pull the plug and and or, or push the button or whatever you want to call it, and and really announced to the world and whatnot. We didn't wait until we felt that we were ready. We just jumped in, and that, that's what most people have to do. Don't you think hey, so? I do think so. And speaking of jumping in, uh, Raina, I believe if I'm mispronouncing your name, I am sorry. Yes, your comment is showing up. Welcome to our show from YouTube. That's exciting. And then Denver, I don't believe you look too scary at 11 at 11 p.m. So even though that's okay, just keep those comments coming in the stream. Zara, it's too bad you have some bandwidth problems and are one. Well, I don't think you're one-sided tonight. You're the one that said that, not me. So we'll just go with the flow there. Keep those comment stream. Keep those comment streams flowing here. Okay, so and um, monogamous temptress, the love coach, wants to say that she's loving the bow, baby. I don't know what that means. Well, you know, if if they if they indicate to us that they'd like to join us and let us know what they mean, just just let us know if you'd like to join us in the uh, the film strip. My sense is that uh, April Fool's Day has has diminished a little bit from when we were kids. Now, that does that tell more? Am, a, am I right in that, or does that just say more about me than you, or is that just a function of age? Or what's the story behind that? Do you think, Jess? Oh man. That's a tough. Why do you ask all the hard questions? Why do you ask me, what do I wish you invented? <laughs> <laughs> that was hard. It was hard. I agree. I you totally know. and completely agree. Um, you know, I think that it's definitely fun when you are teaching a being what it means to have a joke, how does it mean to laugh, how long can you keep up the charade and work on that poker face a little bit, all that's fun because I have a real horrible poker face. Um, what I think comes across my face even if it doesn't come out of my mouth. So if you know me well enough you will know that that's the case. And then um, but I don't know, I still like April Fool's Day if I have somebody to joke with or try and play a prank on or something like that. I mean, it's been a few years because Ryan's a little hard to fool. Mm. Yeah. How about you? So you're not, okay. you don't do a lot with April Fool's these days? I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you what, and, and we did not plan this ahead of time, Jess, but yeah. uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something I'd hate if you were to do it to me, and uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, I'm going to I'm going to tell you one April Fool's joke that I did, and then if you can think of one, you tell me one that you've done. Is that a deal? Absolutely. Okay. So I was um, I was right out of uh, right out of, out of high school, and I was living in a dormitory, eight eight story building, uh, and it, you know it was long ago. Uh, when they said co-ed, what that what they meant was the the floors were segregated, but the the you know the girls or the women were on the eighth floor, as an example, and I was like on the third floor. But I I had a crush on a particular girl. I think her name was Paula, and so on April Fool's Day, I took a piece of butcher paper and I drew. It took me a long time. I drew bricks on the piece of butcher paper, and then I went up to her. Eighth floor room. I broke rules because I don't think guys were allowed 
you know, to actually walk on those, you know, the floors that were for, you know, for women. Uh, and I taped that piece of butcher paper to the door jam so that when she opened up the door in the morning, she would open it up to a brick wall. And that was my way of, yeah, that was my way of saying how, how affectionate I was towards her, being a freshman in, uh, in college. That was my, uh, I think that's about the only April Fool's Day joke I can remember. Well, mine goes back a little farther than um, a freshman in college. It goes back to when I was probably a single digit, in not not even in my double digits yet. And um, so the time the time when you could get away with almost anything. Yes, and I saved up my allowance and had went shopping with a friend and her mom, and I bought fake bugs, and I planted some fake bugs throughout my entire house so that and I bought all the ones that everybody in my house was afraid of so that every time they'd stumble across one there would be hooting and hollering and stomping and throwing bugs to try and kill these bugs that's just, that's the one that I remember and and obviously it worked because you remember it to I to this remember. day mm -hmm. yeah the funniest one was putting some sort of a spider inside of the vaseline fat oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! That was the one that really, really took over the, um, that really, really took the show. That is so funny. That is so funny. That I, I've been, I've lived in households where that would not, that would not have fly. There's a line across which you're not supposed to to cross, and that one would have crossed the line. Oh really? Yeah. See? Spiders. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, spiders you know, are yours, huh? Not you mine, get but, big for but mine. I, I've been in family situations where spiders were definitely taboo. It's hey, so check funny. it out. Look who's here. Tim Longwell's here. Welcome, Tim. Let us know if you Hi, want Tom. to come tell us a joke or something, or your favorite memory of April Fool's on air. We'll, in, we'll invite you into the film strip. Zara says it's always April Fool's Day, or April Fool's Day always. That's good. I love the way that she laughs. And you know... Um, Elaine Niederberg, I hope I said your name right, Elaine, she is big into laughter, and if you've never heard her laugh, it's worth watching one of her HOAs just to hear that. It's very contagious all the way around. And hey, look who's here. Kristen is in the house. Welcome. Woo! Well, hi, Kristen. Yeah. What a, what a fine composer of words Kristen is, wouldn't you say? I would. Mm -hmm. Go mama powers, all I have to say to say to her. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go mom power. All right, so I wanted to, um, we already talked a little bit about our past show, and um, what was, let's see, were you, did you have something else to play? Yeah, I think this would be a great time, because what we're doing is that we're talking about we're talking about uh, April Fool's Day and the traditions that we have. So Jess and I have prepared a little um, a little presentation to um, to talk about the history of um, April Foolery, and it's our April Foolery Hall of Fame. So if you blue box uh, our uh, third. Thumbnail yeah, and film strip. But before I wanted to do that, do we need to mm -hmm. talk about the history of April Fools? I mean, we're talking about April Fools, we're sharing these memories, but do we have a basis for where this even came from? I think you might. Can you start the conversation? I would be glad to, because Kitty did it so well for us in her in her review of the shows for today. She was talking about how the French moved there, um, moved the New Year's from April to. January, and so therein lied some April foolery going on. Also, in general, in the Western cultures, there has always been some sort of a foolhardy day, send somebody on fake errands, try and trick somebody that you know and love, uh, to, uh, as, and maybe it's because it's starting to get nice outside, at least in some parts. Phil was telling me today it's snowing where he's at. I can't imagine. I can't imagine snow on April 1st right now because we had a beautiful sunny day here in Seattle. Shh. Yeah, I won't tell if you won't tell. Yeah. Did you have anything well, you want to add to that as a starting point? And anybody in the audience, share with us. 
tell us tell us what your knowledge of the history is. All I know is I went in and looked up uh, the history of April Fool's Day, and there was a great, um, I, I thought it would be a great video on it, and it was about four or five minutes in length, and it was one of the more boring videos I've ever seen. You'd think that you'd think that you could spice things up if it's about April Fool's Day, right? But it was dry, dry, dry. So. Hmm. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Blue box. All right. All right, we're blue boxed. So here we go. Let's see how this works. Well, this starts off with a post from our uh, good friend uh, Peter Lunn, who talked about April Fool's Day in England and how the BBC is renowned for their uh, April Fool's jokes. In fact, the BBC has always had fun with it, and many of their pranks uh, taking people in and uh, some having telephone lines jammed as a result. Uh, there is an interesting archival website, and it is the Museum of Hoaxes. So it was our good friend Peter who uh, pointed us to uh, to that, and so we thought that we would take a look at some of the hoaxes that um, have historically made the uh, the rounds. And you can see that hoaxing, uh, at least for the Museum of Hoaxes, goes back to the 16th century all the way up to last year. And they're busily, I'm sure today's one of their uh, busiest days of the year. So um, this is, happens to be uh, some of the best from the BBC's April Fool's Day's hoaxes. And I was very pleased to see this one come up because I remember this even from my, my youth. This is a 1957, the Swiss Spaghetti Harvest. The respected BBC news show ran a segment revealing that thanks to a very mild winter and virtual elimination of the dreaded spaghetti uh, weevil, the Swiss farmers were enjoying a bumper spaghetti crop. So there you go. That's hilarious. And here's here's another one, and I'm going to have you read a few of these as well, uh, Jess. But this one is BBC spoofs uh, nation with the Lurpa Luf pun. The British uh, Broadcasting Corporation today gave a big advance build-up to a scheduled concert tonight by the distinguished continental pianist Lurpa Luf. Then abruptly announced the whole thing was off. Actually, of course, Lurpa Luf is April Fool's, spell backwards. And okay. So here's here's Smell of Vision. Mm -hmm. Smell and this is a graphic that Google used last year when they came out with Google Knows. You'll remember. I and do. then uh, yeah. you know, Del Dutch Elm disease uh, infects redheads. <laughs> Well, don't look at my hair then. That's not good. Glad it's not today. Pla planetary alignment decreases gravity. <laughs> okay. BBC April Fool's joke on Big Ben is a big flop. 1980. BBC's overseas service reported that Big Ben <laughs> was going to be given a digital readout. News elicited huge response from. Uh, okay, so here we go. Um, how about this one? You know, chips banned from UK schools in 2003. Uh, I'm just going to read these. BBC reported that uh, school lunch authorities in the UK had banned chips, and for some reason they feel they have to call them French fries, from school canteens. Uh, they reckon the fa fave food is unhealthy. So have decided uh, kids won't be able to eat it anymore. That was... Zara says, okay, the Dutch redhead disease, that one made me laugh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so glad. Mm. Uh, um, was Shakespeare French? Uh, the Today a program in the BBC, they have the Today program as well, but they spell program differently than we do here. The Today program on BBC Radio 4 ran a segment reporting that an excavation at Shakespeare's last home had unearthed evidence, a locket with a French inscription, suggesting that the playwright's mother was French. Okay, so there we go. Well, I'm here to say 
that all over on this side of the pond, Peter, we happen to have our own. It's the NPR, and there's the NPR yes. Fool's Day hoaxes as well, such as <laughs> one of my favorites. Well, do you want to? Can you read this one, Jess? Fondue Hot Springs from 1983. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Okay, there's all considered in a segment about the threat of extinction facing Vince Lombardi Fondue Springs, the last surviving spring of natural fondue cheese in the United States. In a, in, a, in the fondue country of northern Wisconsin. Okay, that's hilarious. Our cheese state. I would have gone. <laughs> Boy, I, I would have too. That would have been great. Uh, you include your French bread, right? Your French fries. Oh, yeah, and gravy and um, something else that makes some really great French fry-based meal. Mm -hmm. So this one is for Ray Hiltz, uh, Canada buys Arizona. <laughs> <gasps> Democrats nominate George Bush. Yeah. Okay. And here's one Nixon for president. Okay, 1992, NPR's Talk of the Nation reported that former President uh, Richard Nixon had declared his candidacy for the Republican presidential nomination. For the younger viewers in our audience, um, Richard that would Nixon be me. was. <laughs> Richard Nixon was what? The tw 37th president of the United States, and he resigned in 1974, just, just in case you needed to have a little history lesson there. Okay, here's one. Uh, Lunar Corp. Uh, do you want me to read this, or do you want to? I can't read it, so okay, you might have a better yeah, view. I, I, okay. I can do it. It's um, NPR's All Things Considered Revealed that a California-based company, Lunacorp, had developed a laser power, uh, laser powerful enough to project images on the surface of the moon. It planned to use uh, this to beam advertisements onto the moon, turning the Earth satellite into a giant billboard. Really? Yeah. Go figure, go figure, go 2001. Figure. So, you know, and I'm looking at some from today, and I have to tell you, I thought it was really funny that there was an app that could show you the value, value of your salary in Bitcoin. How many, I don't even know. Does, I want to know, does anybody in our audience use Bitcoin, have a Bitcoin account? Do you have the actual little things, or um, do you just have your online account? The IRS has come up with a way of valuing uh, Bitcoin so that you um, can, what you have to do is um, declare them as capital gains. Did you know that? <laughs> Somehow, it doesn't surprise me we got there. And that's not an April Fool's joke either. <laughs> no, that part is not part of the April Fool's joke at all. Okay, hey, a brand can now buy rain and inject the smell of new cars and fast food into water molecules to create ads with a no carbon footprint. <laughs> that was from today too. Nice. 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 Oh my, that's horrible. What is this? Naval removal. You know, Disgusting. a new fad among teenagers. Go figure. Well, there are a lot of things. This wouldn't actually. This wouldn't surprise me um, in 2000 or even now, for that matter, as something that might be on the thing. But when you say naval anything, all I can think of is that show where the belly buttons show, and it's actually a jeans commercial. I think I'm coming out, so you better get this party started. And these belly buttons are singing. It's crazy weird. I think of the Bainbridge Naval. Um, never mind. <laughs> Here, here's one of my favorites. Um, corpora, uh, corporate Tattoos, 1994, National Public Radio's All Things Considered program reported that companies such as Pepsi were sponsoring teenagers to tattoo themselves with corporate log logos. Can you imagine that? In return, teenagers would receive a lifetime 10% discount on that company's products. Teenagers were said to be responding enthusiastically to the deal. Okay. <laughs> so that, but wait, you know, Jess. But wait, there's more. There is more because. Two knives for an extra two ninety nine and free shipping. You, 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 you and I always go the extra mile, don't we? We do. So we, we have dipped into the real world to come up with not hoaxes, 
but these are the Jess plus Scott plus you in real life stories. So for example, here we have the UK, right? Solar powered Big Ben emulsions in plans to cut UK Parliament um, emissions. But, um, Parliament confirms it is considering installing solar panels on the clock face. On the face of the clock, on the face of Big Ben. Can you imagine that? And <laughs> in installing, um, uh, let's see here, insulating the palace with sheep's wool. Now that's a real story, not a hoax. You know that that that's how it goes in real life. How about this one? Congress blocks new rules on social lunches. In a victory for the makers of frozen pizzas, uh, tomato paste, and what is that? French fries? Congress on Monday blocked rules proposed by the Agriculture Department that would have uh, overhauled the nation's school lunch program. Not a hoax. Real thing, folks. Real thing. And how about this one? So, Universe uh, Today website on July 24th, 2009, and if you know, if it's on the internet, it's got to be true. It says, company looks to etch advertising on the moon. So little robots, solar powered no doubt, would go back and forth and back and forth, uh, disturbing the dust on the moon, and you could put your logo there, right there on the moon, permanently. And this is uh, obviously my favorite. Our uh, friend Mark Schaefer, who wrote the uh, Social Media Explained, and that's a book that you and I are going to be reviewing on this show, right? Okay, so here we are oh, yeah. on, page, on page 15. Oh, it's a great book, too. It says, the other day I saw this remarkable photo on the Internet. A guy <laughs> tattooed a Nike swoosh symbol on the side of his foot. This is a scan from his book, page 15. I, I scanned it earlier today. It made me pause and think, isn't that amazing? Isn't that what we all want our companies to achieve? To have people love us so much that they permanently decorate their bodies with our company logo? Real uh, life, not a hoax, not a hoax. Not a, no, not a hoax. I want to go one step further, though. I, I want people to tattoo sparkle on themselves. Show their sparkle. You know, but that only happens on the inside. And then it can shine out. Right. Well, we all have sparkle that we get to shine on from the inside out. Absolutely. But if you really feel like you need a tattoo of anything, go with sparkles. <laughs> Yahoo! Got it. So, that's what I would say. Go with sparkles. Now, hey, okay, so this is funny because there are references that I'm not getting here, so I might need some help from you guys in the audience um, and you, Scott. Denver says, um, was that a fake celebrity profile? I missed the kit car. And I'm like, is that kit car like kit? the one that talked and lived in the back of a semi-truck in the TV show, because that's the car I wanted for my first car. Was that something else? I have no idea. I'm sorry. I can't help with that. Maybe. Okay. Uh, Maybe somebody can help us in the in there. And then um, Raina, she asks a question, and I thought it would be good that maybe we should address. What is a Bitcoin? Ah, okay. So I'll, I'll start the answer, and then you can, you can correct me. It's, it's internet money, and so it's not based on, well, let's see, if I remember correctly, it's not based on scarcity. Basically, uh, people will somehow get uh, credit through uh, a website, and then you can barter services back and forth. So I, I'll buy something, or I've got so many Bitcoins, and I'll buy it, and it'll transfer from my account to someone else's account. And it's, you know, up until now, been an underground economy, not based on... Uh, David Emerlin had a great post on this the other day. Um, so... Um, uh, so it, it's internet money is, is the best answer I can give. What about you? Do you have an idea? It's an actual real the currency. The, it's the first currency that is not controlled by a, by a government, actually. And it is finite. There's only a certain amount of it, and there are these algorithms okay. that, like you could mine for gold, you can mine for Bitcoin, and it takes a serious amount of computer data to get it. So there are very few miners, but you can buy it. And so 
it does change in its fluctuation, but again, it's, it's the first currency that is actually recognized and has been adopted by people in a very long time that has not been created or started or backed by a government. Yeah. Welcome to the 21st century, folks. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's a good right? and and that's and it's not a and it's not an April Fool's joke either. It's it's honestly no, that's all out there. real, and it's been around for quite a while. I don't own any bitcoins. Our family doesn't own any bitcoins, but I'm very intrigued by them, actually. Okay. So. Nora doesn't have a poker face either. I'm so glad we wear we wear our arms on our sleeves or. Whatever the saying is, that's for sure. I was reading, okay, so I'm reading at time, and I'm going to, I'll have to share this, because this is where some of, apparently there's something, um, cracks me up, I don't even know. There, there are some things that we haven't heard about yet, or at least I haven't, because of the way my day has gone. Um, so I am curious to get out there and learn what all of these, uh, what some of these references are about, so that'll be cool. Zara actually has history. Okay, this is also totally not related to the to April Fool's Day, but it is a really good story. Zara actually has a um, a title, a ta a, a personal affectionate nickname that came from when her daughter was in was it when her daughter was in um, nursery school. So she was mama of I'm going to say your daughter's name wrong. I apologize, Sarah. Ketama? Ketama? I would love to have a phonetic spelling so we could get that right. It's beautiful spelling, and it's just as unique and vibrant as your name. So I am curious to learn a little bit more, more about that. Oh, good. Tim, thank you for posting in the comments all about the Coinbase charts so we can do that. Um, I don't know what foul Ryan means, Nora. So... Um, <laughs> I'm assuming that was in reference to my honey, but I'm not sure. For everybody who doesn't know, my husband is a computer programmer who is, um, I guess, uh, introverted is a good word for him. He's a true. Okay. Oh, good. Kristen is going to come on. Yeah. Scott's right. going to hook you up there. Excuse me. I'm going to, I need to adjust a little bit more. And then um, I'm trying to think about this whole thing. You know, I was thinking about April Fool's Day and I'm thinking about all of these things and I can't wait to hear what Kristen is going to share with us because she has, she is a wonderful mama and has a big family and will have a lot to share. I was in, in preparation for today, I want, I ran out of time to actually be able to watch some of the April Fool's stuff that I wanted to and I know that in celebration of creativity, April Fool's Day is what I would consider the best day of the year to celebrate the true creativity that we all share uh, and possess. And if we take the time to tap into that community and really connect, then Katama rhymes with mama. I love it. Okay, I'll come back to that. But the whole idea of creativity, when you really put your mind to it, and if you want to do something creative and fun that is memorable, you can do it. And we're excited to hear what Kristen says when she gets here. So Zara, she was talking about her daughter's name. Her daughter's name is Katama, which rhymes with mama. So she was mama of Katama. That's a fun, that, that's a fun thing to say. Okay, I'm I'm doing administrative stuff behind the scenes here, and I'm hitting enter. So we'll see we'll see how that works. I hope. Oh, I just think I am, oops, I just invited the wrong person into the film strip. <laughs> well, that's okay if they join us; it'll be surprised. At least you know who they are. Yeah, it's not just the wide world public. I think um, I did. That's. I was trying to think of another April Fool's joke that I did, and I have come up with nothing. And I'm a horrible joke teller. So the only joke that I can actually pull off is this one. Two men walked into a bar. The third one ducked. That's the gist of my That's joke. Very funny. Well, you know, this is when our audience needs to come to the rescue and at least type in their favorite kid's joke. Because if yeah. they do that, then... Clean then family we... joke of any age, I'll take. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Nora, 
my parents moved into their apartment on April 1st of 1981. So we are on 33 years of them living here. They moved down from New Jersey with me on my mom's lap with a lamp hanging out the window and my mom saying this better be not be an April Fool's Day joke. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. I think it's, now I want to know, Nora, do you actually remember that or did somebody tell you that story? Because I don't think I can remember anything that happened in 1981. Okay. I'm not being very much help to you, am I? That's okay. Did you, I'm looking at the screen share. Was this the screen share that Tim shared? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, um, so that talks about Bitcoin. Yeah, that's the Bitcoin. Thanks thanks for following up on that. You're welcome. This is why this is why Jess does the common tracker, because uh, she's so good at it. And what I do is I, I end up uh, so it getting looks like Raina, mired. That's what, Raina asked a question. How do you add people to a Hangout on air? Well, Raina, if um, we... You can be invited to be in the film strip, or you can just watch from YouTube or the event page on Google+, wherever you happen to be. And um, if we are connected with you and we know how to get in ho a hold of you, we can invite you in from this program, uh, the actual Hangout on Air program, to join us. So if you were to have a Hangout on Air, that is how you would invite others to join you in the film strip. All right, Nora has a joke for us while Scott's working on this. Nora Whalen joke, what's the difference between a between spinach and boogers. And the difference is the parents can't get their kids to eat spinach. <laughs> Maybe we should start talking about boogers being spinach when you pull it out of your nose. <laughs> oh, Kristen said laugh out loud, April Fool, Scott. So she's not coming on. Oh, <laughs> that was good. You've got him over here working really hard, Kristen. Look at that. That was a great one right there. I just, I, I'm not, I'm not buying that. I think, I think that's Kristen's sense of humor. Okay, here's another one. Nora is coming to our rescue here. All right, here's the joke. How do you fit four elephants into a Volkswagen? Two in the front and two, and two in the back. In the back. <laughs> Uh, that was old when the Dead Sea was still sick. Ta -da. <laughs> I don't get that, but okay. <laughs> oh no, that's <laughs> my computer's being a little slow now too. So, all right. Well, how about if um, how about if we try this? All right. Here it comes Kristen. If you're coming, check it out. I just posted an invitation to you. Now. Okay. Thanks, um, Jeff. Welcome. <laughs> no problem at all. Well, because you've you've got the invite from within the uh, from within the the, the platform uh, software. I I have to go outside. I don't know why it didn't work, but uh, Kristen will be joining us momentarily. Awesome. We hope. We hope that'll be okay. great. Now you know. There was a time, and I have a funny story to tell, but it has nothing to do with April Fool's Day. Um, and it, it does have to do with a really awesome dad, though. Um, when I was a little, and I can't even believe my kids. This was before we had to wear seatbelts. So not only when I was a kid did we not have to sit in car seats until we were teenagers, we also didn't have to wear seatbelts. So one time we picked up my aunt. Her name is Sister Esther Marie. We picked her up from the airport. We were living outside of Chicago. And we picked her up and we were driving home. And I was so excited to see her. There weren't quite enough seats for three kids and three adults. So I was sitting in Sister Esther Marie's lap. And my parents were so cool. They let me actually hold my Winnie the Pooh teddy bear right outside that window. And the, the air was blowing and Winnie the Pooh was flying. And I was telling this great story. And all of a sudden, there was a gust of wind or something happened. And we turned a corner. And I lost. I lost my Winnie the Pooh bear, and I cried and I cried, and it was the middle of a construction zone, it was the middle of a day, there were steamrollers everywhere, and my dad figured out how to park between two of those big 
cone things, and he ran back, and I saw him get in front. You know, granted, I'm however old I was. I was we moved to Kansas when I was five, so this was before I was five, and I remember him running towards the steamroller and thinking the steamroller's so big and it's coming right for him. But he rescued my Pooh Bear, and my Pooh Bear did live to tell the story. And my dad lived to tell the story, and Pooh Bear wore tar for the rest of that mm. doll's existence from that story. Great story. The only story that I can remember from about age five was that I had my grandparents visiting us, and they bought me a helium balloon, and I was so proud of it until I, I opened my hand, and it went up in the air, and I just felt so badly, and I was crying, and they said, well, you know, that happens all the time. And uh, by now, you know, a half an hour later, they said, well, by now it's probably over Kansas. <laughs> so, and that was before I lived there. That was okay. before you lived there. Kristen, I'm going to send this to you a different way because you said you wanted to come on. I see that you want to come on, and I sent you an invite one way, but it didn't work. It would have come from Justin Scott, so let me try something else here for you. Um, all right, so if you want to check out Sunny, Sunny's post, um, Cadwallader, Cadwallader, I need to learn how to say your name too, Sunny. She, she, I put a thing in the, um, in the blue chat box for you, Scott, to screen share what Sunny was sharing today. Oh, okay. Got mm -hmm. it. Got it. So, let's see here. I'm going to put this over here. So what is it that I'm supposed to do with this? Breaking. Uh, click the image for more on Blake Bill. So I should click the image? Go for it. Okay, here we go. All right. Oklahoma football. Breaking. Click the image for more. Okay, so I'm going to click the image one more time. Oh, the, oh that must be the, um, that's a tweet. Uh, all right, so oh, this is sort of like uh, following a trail. So switch back to retweets. Uh, 811 retweets, uh, 377 favorites. All right, breaking news. Switches back to quarterback. All right. I guess I, I, I don't get it, but... <clears throat> That's okay. I don't have to. Maybe that's the hoax. Maybe that's the okay. April Fool's. Okay, do it again. Hang on. And I'm going to oh, go back oh, to the comments oh. now. Hang on. Maybe I, I just had to... Uh... Now, only on this show would we uh, would would we uh, blindly okay. click through. Because it says pick... There we go. So there, there must be an Oklahoma football something or other to this that that we're not getting. Let me see. Okay, so not sure if you can do this in screen share or not. Saw this and shared on Twitter. Click the picture in this in the tweet. So maybe that's it. Maybe it's the circular joke to try and figure out what happened. All right. So let's see. Why do two pencils go? Where do two? Where do pencils go for vacation? Pennsylvania. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. All right. This is good. A boomer sooner. Okay, you can tell Scott and I are not this particular kind of sports fan. Hi, Kristen! And your naked face! <laughs> there she is. Do you see me? Yes, we can see you. Can you see us? Hang on, maybe I, I just had to... Uh, okay, and you're still listening to us while we're talking live, so there'll be a little bit of a delay until you until you pause us on the other screen there. Okay, knock, knock, who's there? Lettuce, lettuce who? Lettuce in, it's freezing out here. Okay, that's one I could teach. Carter, Nora. Okay. Okay, so Sunny Cadwallader is how you say her name. Awesome. Click the picture in this in the tweet. So maybe that's it. Maybe it's the circular joke to try and figure out what happened. All right, so let's see. <laughs> this is fun. I don't know if she can hear us live, but it's fun listening to her reactions watching us. Okay, you can tell Scott and I are not 
this particular kind of sports. Oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> No, it's not naked. I just saw something cheating. It says, like, smooth. I'm like, no, it's supposed to be not. Okay, I can see you now. I can see you now. <laughs> it's so great you're here, Kristen. <laughs> we finally meet after all of these um, plus ones and, and messages and comments okay, uh, thanks. back to each other. This is this is a, a real treat. Are you able to mute the uh, the playback so that we can we can move on and, and okay. learn a little bit more about your April Fool's hoax or kids jokes? Oh my goodness, my kids are just so hilarious. They they never stop to amaze me. Really? Oh gosh. Oh oh. My my Courtney, she's my oldest. She has us laughing all the time. She just cracks me up, and she's practically my mother. Sorry, <laughs> mom, but <laughs> oh so my goodness! <laughs> so like your mother, or um, no, she like schools me. Oh, got it. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, anything there. I learn that has anything of value comes from my daughter Courtney. <laughs> That's so cool. And how old is she? Oh, she's 11. Okay, yes. <laughs> and it started at six months. <laughs> oh, my I'm goodness. Go to that, but I'm not quite to 11 yet. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, you know, I've got six. I've got the six kids, and they all have their value to add. But my Courtney, she definitely keeps us all in line. She That's lets us cool. know who rules the roost. It's definitely her. <laughs> okay. I'm just a, a, a traveler in her sphere. <laughs> but, but her April Fool's joke this year was just, I don't know, it was just cute in her own right. She sent me this little Instagram thing, and it was just, a, it was so subtle. It was so subtle, I hardly caught it. And it was just her sending this picture, and she just said, ha, 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 who is this? And it was definitely me, but she's trying to act like she's all cool to her friends. <laughs> and so that was just my little thing to add. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I think it's great. You're, you're exactly on air like I picture you from your post. So this is really cool. And I'm really glad that you came and crashed our party and, and joined us here because it's so good to actually... Yeah, share a space with you. Aw, it's my honor. <laughs> and and you know we're going to be we're going to be close from now on because when when you when one does something like this, it just makes for a very special uh, relationship. Even if it is on April first and it's an April Fool's story that we talk about, there's there's just something about um, it's almost like breaking bread. So this is great. The Eucharist. I totally appreciate that. Thank you. Oh. Thanks for coming on. Do you do you have any favorite kids jokes? Oh my goodness. I was trying to think of this one. It's actually my absolute favorite. Uh and I was trying to think of it's Mitch Hedberg and it has something to do with a fish stick. And I was trying to remember it, but I can't remember the full joke. And it's driving me nuts because it's my absolute favorite kid joke. So this okay. this is one of the great things about Hangouts on Air because we can do an APP to all of our viewers and if you've given enough clues to what the joke is, someone put it in the comment stream and um, it'll be shared with all of us, right? Yes, I hope. Oh, good. And who was the name that goes with fish sticks? Mitch Hedberg. One of my favorite comedians ever. Bless his heart, he passed on, but his spirit lives on. Okay, so let's see. So I think if you're justice. a fish, you want to be a fish stick, you must have very good posture. Yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so appropriate, right? <laughs> it's very appropriate. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'm giving that up. That that right there is really awesome. <laughs> That's gonna turn into a blog post. I think I think it totally could. Hey, it's time for our plus two takeaway. Do you want to hang around, uh, Chris, Kristen, while we do that? 
Oh, for sure. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. All right, Scott, bring it on up. Here we go. Before we get started, Tim says, I can't join the show. You will have to ask Kristen why. <laughs> I don't know if that's a TMI question or what, but if you have the answer, he brought it up. That was Tim Longwell? Yes. Okay, we have a little private HOA thing going, and I'm trying to get him to, I'm trying to see if he might be willing to come on our, our, our AVFTE show. <laughs> so oh, maybe good. it has something to do with that. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love Tim Longwell. He's very talented. He is very talented. And so are you and your team for ATFE. I think Thank you. From the edge. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. I'm glad I got to see the second one, and I went back and I watched the first one. It, I'm I'm excited about it. You guys do a really good job. We have uh, amazing people coming on. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan too. Thank you. Okay, so impact equation, here we come. Plus two takeaway. You bet. So the impact uh, equation is Chris Brogan and Julian Smith. It's a book that I read early on in my career. Uh, in terms of learning about um, social media, and it uh, really helped set my uh, compass to go to the right uh, direction. So they they kind of needed to have a hook in, in which to put all of their uh, the comments that they wanted to make. So they made um, an algebraic um, equation: contrast, reach, exposure, articulation trust and echo and we've gone through all but the last two and today um, Jess is going to be talking a little bit about trust and echo their terms for uh, uh, what they're talking about and we'll kind of go from there so Jess okay, I'm gonna so let you I'm take it away blue boxing that impact equation and then when they were talking about this this is the um, the networking part of the book so it was split up into three different sections and this was the section about network and where they talk about they define audience community and network and how most people for their audience and for their community and for their network are not actually fostering the relationships they necessarily think they are and I thought that was I thought it was very interesting how they explored that and that sometimes people actually have an audience when they actually think they have a community and sometimes people have a community and they think they have an audience so it's really important to understand what are you going you know what are you going for are you going for people to talk to and connect with one to many or one to one and then do something with that or are you trying to bring people together in a way that um, allows them to not only connect with you but to connect with each other in a meaningful way and I love that idea of community and Kristen is actually part of a fantastic vibrant community right on Google Plus of you from the edge that I think does a great it has both. It has the community. They come together and they hang out and they communicate and then they also have an audience where they put together this great information to make other people aware of their, you know, of the community and having this following and this audience outside of the community as well. So it's really neat to know and there's different strategy for each one of those. So it's not a one-size-fits-all or a one path is the right path. And so let's move to the next one, Scott. And that takes us actually into the trust. And they, these guys really like equations. I have to tell you, I when I see math equations, I totally tune out. So this is this has been a slightly difficult book to for me to read. When one, it's called equation. Two, it's um. They threw another equation in the middle of all this about what the tr what the trust equation is, and I thought that was really interesting because in this in this when we're talking about trust, it takes time. It takes so much time. It takes so much energy that we have to make sure we're taking the time and giving ourselves that. So we've got to be the turtle. We've got to be the turtle in the tortoise and the hare and one step at a time, consistency to get us where we're going. And sometimes. It, depending on what the other parts of the equation are, whether it's reach or contrast or um, articulation or exposure, those all have different weights which overall impact the entire equation, yet we have this whole idea of 
um, you know, trust. And when you get into trust, it's something that everybody says they know, but how do you define it? So Chris Brogan and Julian Smith d tried to explain it, and I think they did a very good job in that. And if you like equations, this is perfect for you. If you don't like equations, just know it's a really neat thing how they dive into the different areas of trust, credibility, reliability, and your intimacy, your one-on-one -on -one connection, your one-to-many connection, and your self-interest, and what you're, how you're balancing all that. Okay, I'm ready for the next one. Which takes us to another piece of trust, trust which they talk about interactions, and, and Chris and Julian, they talk about interactions in a way that really um, surprised me and it felt a little superficial. So I thought it was a really good starting point, but I really think that when you're thinking about intro intro introductions to other people, that they have to have a lot of meaning and they have to be done carefully. Because if you go back to credibility and reliability, if you're just name dropping and saying, yeah, go contact this person or making introductions on whatever platforms you've got. All of those things are great, but if nothing ever happens, if no connection is actually made, we, the person making the connection, didn't do a good job. So if we keep saying, go talk to this person, you, have a, you might have a connection, or I think you would benefit from talking to this person, and nothing comes from any of those, and no connections actually occur, we lose trust. We lose reliability of who, what we're doing, and we turn into that noise, and we get filtered out. So I love what they say about, about making connections and being selfless and doing it for no purpose other than connecting two people that want to work together. Love that. And I would say make sure that you're doing it very carefully with a lot of thought, and you want to follow up not to be in the middle of it, but to see if it worked because our job to build trust on a one-to-one -one and a one-to-many relationship is are, are we doing what we say we're going to do? So if we can be reliable and if we can make connections that count, we will stand out, we will be remembered, and other things will come our way from it. And that's a really, really cool point that I think was articulated well in this book. So make connections that matter to the people you're connecting, not necessarily to you or just because. All right, Scott, next one. When we're going to start talking about Echo, which is one of the things that I like the best, I also think it's the hardest, uh, the absolute hardest. and um, that is the fact that we have the ability to control our voice. We control what we say, where we say, how we say it, and why we say it. And it's very easy to say something that our target audience or our community might find a little condescending or a little directional when they weren't looking for that or who knows, some other one side of the spectrum responses that we were never intending to have. So when we think about our voice in the sense that we are talking, I am talking to you right now. I'm talking to you and there happen to be a lot of you right now, but I'm still talking directly to you. I care about what I'm saying to you. I feel like it has value for you and I'm going to say it in such a way that makes that connection as strong as possible. And that is a skill that all of us can practice, and um, it doesn't matter how good we are at it, we can always be better, and the way we present, not only in situations like this, but maybe on podcasts or in actual presentations where you're standing in front of a group, or, um, you know, anywhere else in the grand wide world, standing in the line at the grocery store. I mean, there are a ton of times I've been in the grocery store and I've made a comment out loud and I start a conversation with three different people at the same time and we have a little party while we're waiting to get our groceries bagged and paid for because of just something that happened to be a connection point for us online. So practice, practice everywhere when you're, you know, when you're at church, when you are with your friends, wherever you're at. And it does it is for them, right? When I have something to say, I'm, it's coming from my heart and it's for you. And I care about that enough to say it out loud. So I want to make sure that it's worded in such a way that you are able to receive it and 
it's at a time you want to receive it. All right, Scott, what's next? Which goes to acting with purpose and acting with purpose and making those, I'm going to go back to it, not just connections, but meaningful connections. How do you take it to the next level? How do you, um, how, how do you go from here to there with one person or a small group or a large group or a community? How, how does that work? All right, so I want to talk a minute. Okay, Scott, we're ready for the next one. I want to talk for a minute about inspiration. And inspiration comes from, and I'm pulling this directly from the book, there are five aspects of inspiration that Chris Brogan and Julian Smith define. They talk about distilling the message. They talk about discovering the core of the message, where did it come from, what did it prompt it, where was it prompted, and practice it over and over, say it in a lot of different ways to a lot of different spaces so that you can get that voice, control that voice, and use it to make the depth, depth of connection that you want, and then uh, use examples when you're delivering, and the last one was practice a lot. So there was a lot of overlap and similarity in those and I totally, um, totally love that. So thank you. This is the last, um, this is the last of this one. Next week we will be reviewing a new book and breaking down and talking about a new book for you. So I want to say we don't know where Kristen went. We, was re we were really glad she was here. So Kristen, just so you know, everybody wants, especially Nora says, bring back Kristen. Bring back Kristen. And then um, she also says, I love this. All right. I know Jess and Scott, which means I'm cool. That's right. Circle of trust, baby. Right back at you. Right back at you. Right back at you. All right, Scott. So we have finished our plus two takeaway. Do we have anything else we want to talk about? Well, uh, I think maybe you're talking a little bit more about next week's program because there'll be a call yeah. to action with that for everyone who happens to be listening. And maybe they, they have friends who have also read the book. And it's going to be one of those uh, seminal, great, great um, uh, programs that'll be a little bit groundbreaking for us because I don't think we've tried anything quite like this before. Do you want to talk a little bit more about it? I'm going to repeat exactly everything Scott just said when I say what next week's show is, which is on April 8th, we are having a panel discussion about the one thing, which is out of my reach, Scott. I forgot to get that before the show. So do you have yours handy? I do, but I don't, okay. you know, I don't have the white cover, but I oh, do have okay. the, the book. So You have the book. And we're going to have that book. We're going to have a conversation. And we are going to have a panel. So if you have read the book, if you know somebody that's read the book, um, if you know you, you know anything along those lines, we do have spots open on our panel, and we would love for you to join us. Also, that's April 8th. Also, on April 15th, our show will be about lifelong learning, and that's going to be a really fantastic one. Um, Terry Lee Britton and Stephanie Sims will be joining us for that show. I'm really excited. Who knows where that one's going to go? It's going to be so such an awesome topic. And then um, we also have the next week planned. It is Earth Day, so we are in the process of building that show. If you have anything you like, know, love, want to know about Earth Day, want to make sure we cover on Earth Day, we are open to suggestions at that point as well. All right. And we are going to end with repeating Kristen's favorite joke. If you're a fish and you want to be a fish stick, you must have good posture. And we're going to end with... Um, Nora's latest question, what's dangerous and swings from trees, a monkey with a chainsaw? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Happy April Fool's Day. We hope you enjoyed our review of past pranks and a few of the ones from today and tons of great jokes. Thank you very much. And our wonderful surprise visit from Kristen in the audience. And we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Take care.